Take note. You are listening to Music Is My Life, a podcast from Berkeley Online. I'm your host, Pat Healy, and the musical life we will explore today is that of Sarah Neufeld. She recently stopped by Berkeley Online's Boston office before a gig at the nearby Cafe 939. She sat down to chat with us about her musical journey, beginning as a young kid in Canada, learning the Suzuki method, through a period of musical rebellion, through her work with Bell Orchestra and Arcade Fire. You've heard of them, right? To her solo work and her recent collaboration with her husband, Colin Stetson. But we begin with a simple question that does not quite have the simple answer you'd think it might have. Is she classically trained? We'll let her tell you. I'm half classically trained. So, because it means such different things to people, what is musical education? But I, I started out as a very small Suzuki kid, a three-year-old. And I was dying to play at that age. And uh, we had a, a strong little Suzuki community in, my, in the small town that I grew up. So I did that until I was 12, and then I took a few years in a more sort of traditional classical setting in a town that was a couple hours away, because I, I really did live in a small place and there wasn't a lot, you know, there wasn't a lot to choose from. And so I had to travel for the more serious lessons. And I, at that point, I was, I'd always been really into improvising over, over the practice of repertoire. And at that point, you know, I was getting into my early teens and feeling not super aligned with the stuff that I was playing or even just like the environment of, of the, the education, um, the classical education I was receiving. And, you know, although I, it was it was definitely one of those like teenage like well I'm gonna play the guitar and sing and be in a band, but I meant it and I, I really did want to do that and so I did I did actually quit the violin and and took guitar lessons and learned all of the Hendrix solos that I could and then a few years into that realized that I had this facility on the violin that I would probably never have on anything else given the amount of hours I'd spent working on it and I realized like well I can do whatever I want with this thing, really. I mean, nobody's telling me not to. Um, so I, I integrated that into my, into that sort of fun, more fun, free, fluid, compositional zone, and then I ended up picking it back up in a more formal way in university, studied jazz, and I had a, a technique uh, teacher that was both jazz and classical. So I actually got my ass seriously kicked for those key few years um, in my early 20s, which was great because you know, even though I, I have, again, really gone my own way with it, I've, I've held on to the, just the daily scales and, and sort of like rudimentary exercises that keeps you fluid. And you need the fluidity on an instrument, like any instrument, but a fretless, bowed instrument, especially. Neufeld says that her time away from the classical training rigmarole helped her take a more relaxed approach when collaborating with others. This is all a long time ago. I think I was maybe 14, 15. Um, but I was, really, I was really excited about theater. I was really excited about dance. I'd always done a lot of... I'd been in many performing arts. So I just simply shifted gears into, the, into more dance, more theater, and then learning guitar and playing music with other people in a much more relaxed setting than, say, like 7 a.m. orchestra practice. And... So I didn't really feel like I was losing, I was gaining things, I wasn't losing a thing. But yeah, if I, I don't, you know, it, it, didn't, it didn't last that long. I picked it up again quite quickly. And it's not like I went years without playing it at all. We had a really musical neighborhood and we'd have these like total neighborhood hoedowns and we'd play like all of the oldies we could think of. And I would always, they always wanted jigs. <laughs> so I knew a few of those, <laughs> as any good violin student does. Neufeld says that it was during her time at university that she discovered her identity as a musician. However, it wasn't necessarily the classes she was taking, as much as it was the classmates she had begun to play with in her free time. I discovered this way of playing maybe through some some improvised collaborations um, in my time in university and 
this group I formed early on called Bell Orchest. We were influenced by a lot of different stuff, but um, the Rachels, Penguin Cafe Orchestra, Steve Reich, um, Tortoise, Aro Park, like all this stuff that was mixed up together and that wasn't necessarily classical. It wasn't jazz. It wasn't rock. It was influenced by everything and it was sometimes called post rock. But that's where I started playing really chordally. And we didn't have guitar in the band. And I sort of, you know, we didn't say, like, okay, you're going to play as if you're the guitar in this setting. But that's what I was gravitating towards. I get really excited with the harmonic combinations that you can create you know on any given instrument and the violin like you know you can play a you can play quarterly and you have to arpeggiate with the bow a little bit but then using different pressure and different different intention with your bow arm you can create like different totally different feelings like um it's pretty wide open in terms of of what you can do quarterly I think even though there's only four strings and it's fifths and and all that but um yeah, I sort of discovered that through through my collaboration with Bellarcast and then and then on and on and on throughout the years leading me to where where I began to make solo records. And playing with Bellarcast led to an invitation for Neufeld to join a band you might have heard of, Arcade Fire. So Richard Perry and I formed sort of a, a, a union of, of playing music together really early on in nineteen ninety nine and we we were invited to play with a dance, um, a, uh, I guess a, a dance project in a Concordia, and we we were introduced to the drummer Stefan Schneider, who's playing with me tonight. And so the three of us that was early days formed Bell Orchestra, and then that grew a couple into a couple years of different projects and more people. And at that point, say 2002 ish, uh, Richard was also involved in in the recording department and he got to know a couple of people that were in the early incarnation of Arcade Fire and he went and recorded the EP one summer and kind of came back like really involved and was playing with them and th- throughout th- that year into 2003 I sort of got involved I mean it Montreal's a small a small scene a small city especially in like the English sort of music kid school <laughs> This is a long time ago, too. I feel like it's bigger now, or I don't know anybody or something. But, um, yeah, back then it was like, oh, you're playing with those guys? Oh, me too. I really want to, you know. And I um, I got to come along into the, the making of Funeral, which was a really nice moment. I mean, I had seen them play a couple times live, and it was really touching. And the music that would be Funeral was really lent itself really well to strings and I felt really like naturally sort of disposed to to playing on those songs. Neufeld says it was around this time that she realized she could have a sustainable career in music, but it wasn't necessarily a eureka moment. I don't know if I've ever necessarily felt like that black and white about about that, but you know, it was it was more a question of like, hey, c- can I come and play? Hey, do you want to come play with us? And yeah, let's we we tested it out and it worked and it sounded good and we had fun and you know one show led into a tour led into like the release tour into many many years of playing together bell orchest was was definitely you know we we were we were taking steps forward to to become sustainable as well although it was a lot different and you know slower more niche for sure but we were taking steps you know, to you know, in Canada we have these wonderful systems and government grants and artist support, and so we were getting into that, those channels and doing residencies and and all this stuff. So it did feel like like we were putting one foot in front of the other, and we would somehow become sustainable. But then Arcade Fire became sustainable a lot quicker, and that yeah, that was the first time I'd ever not had like five Joe jobs at the same time. Oregon tree planting in the summers. Neufeld did, however, have a eureka moment about quitting her job planting trees. Canada and the States are so close together, but um, tree planting isn't a thing here the way it is in, in Canada. And what a lot of people that are sort of tough enough physically and mentally to do go off in the summer and you live in a tent and you work, it's piecework. 
and you you work in clear cuts. You work in rugged northern land in all sorts of terrible weather and carrying 50 pounds of little wet, cold, tiny trees on your hips, bending over, digging holes, climbing over logs and up mountains. And so I did that for six summers. That's how I sort of, I half put myself through school and through part of being in bands. The last summer I tree planted was the summer right before we released Funeral. So I was saving up money to go on tour. And I remember getting sort of like a hand infection and that was it for me. It's pretty easy to get messed up hands, like cramming them into dirt with lots of chemicals and sharp tools all day long. And I was like, I'm a violinist, this is bad. And since that day that Neufeld declared herself a violinist and not a tree planter on the side, she has undertaken several different projects, each one requiring a different shade of herself. Those three projects and then my solo project are all so different. Um, I'll work backwards. So with Khaled and I, we created the duo as a, a real experiment or journey into the idea that we could pl- be our individual solo voices put together because we, we know each other's music so well. I mean, we have a life together and we've influenced each other's compositions and just development as artists over the years so much and we're also just yeah we 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 understand I think the way each other works and um and the potential and so we we always wanted to put those two together I mean my project solo voice is a lot newer and younger and so I think we after my first album then we then we sort of felt like ah we're at the point now where we could actually like physically layer these two together and see what happens and so we we are bringing almost exactly the same thing to the table to the duo table as the solo table you know there's slight tweaks here and there of course like the marriage of violin and all the saxophonics he does they don't work on all the same instruments all the same time and the just the different harmonics and, and tonalities of the instruments. But that is a pretty full-on representation of both of our max sort of solo potentials at the same time, and I think it works really beautifully, and it's palpable. And then um, Beller Cast is, is a, you know, there's a lot of voices, and we, we all sort of equally bring our improvisatory sensibilities and also a lot of listening um, and because there's no, there's no one leader, there's no one idea of like, we're going to create something that sounds like this. Like we're, we're always discovering and trying to be surprised. And so, you know, our work actually takes a long time, I think, because of that. But, but we're all arriving together. It's like a really, I always referred to us as like the six-headed dog, you know, <laughs> like ah, super crazy going around in circles and then arriving ultimately at something really beautiful, strange and quite unique. You know, and I'm, I'm bringing myself to that equally with everybody else. And I don't, I don't play as full on all the time. There's a lot more space. There's a lot more going on, right? So there's more given giving and receiving and then Arcade Fire is this, is a whole other beast of a thing you know and it's really driven by Wynn and Regine like writing the songs there's a lot of arrangement that happens in the band I come in and I do quite a small thing in that band so I don't I don't really um, employ a lot of my like individualistic technique I'm more I'm playing string string stuff and it's it's really nice it's like quite relaxing to play like that and and uh, I'm like serving the bigger group more, like doing backup vocals and playing tambourine when that's what it what's called for, and playing synth when that's what's called for. It's like f- just kind of filling a, a role that needs to be filled in a, in a. It's super super fun. Neufeld refers to her collaboration with saxophonist husband Colin Stetson as an experiment to see if their very unique individual sounds would sound good together. They had collaborated before their 2015 album, Never Were the Way She Was, which I might like to take a moment to editorialize, is a truly dizzying album. Something about the way that the two instruments hit my ears together just knocks me off balance and, well, basically it kind of melts my emotional core or something. It's just really, really effective stuff. 
Anyway, Neufeld says that it was this album that marked a collaborative milestone for the couple. Colin and I met in the musical setting. Bellarcast was playing. He was playing with Auntie Bellas. Like we were, we were impressed with each other's, I think, dyna- dynamic performative qualities as musicians. We didn't know each We'd never met each other. We had no idea who each other was. We saw each other perform and just like, there's something in, like we have in common as performers and I think it's, there is like a sort of a, an intensity and a physicality. I think we'd been waiting for the right time to collaborate in a really intense like one-on-one duo way. We we have collaborated tons in various projects together. You know, he's collaborated within Bellarcast, I've collaborated within other groups of his, and we had done soundtrack work before our duo record. I think that we had arrived at the moment where we were able to put our voices like strongly together. Yeah, I mean, collaborating in a couple, I think it's it's pretty typical stuff. It's like you have to watch your your boundaries and like, you know, couples tend to like, you know, l- let emotionality come into things a little bit more, which can like be a hindrance, but it can also be a bonus because you can get more emotion. I think there's a lot of emotion in our music, you know, and it's just like little stuff with people that work together, that live together, you know, you can like get pettier than like, oh, you would never say that to me if I was your bandmate, you know, <laughs> that kind of stuff. But you just have to like, appreciate each other and 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 also watch yourself and like create maybe more boundaries than you have normally in your relationship because you don't want to step on each other you know too much it's like a precious thing speaking of precious things here's what neufeld has to say about her violin of choice i got this instrument when i was making my first solo record in 2013 and i didn't know that the woman at the at the at the shop um, on the Upper West Side in New York City wouldn't ever tell me who made them or how much they were or what year they were from. She just wanted me to find something that I really liked, and so I played a lot of them. And I always like big-bodied, low-end sort of sounding instruments. And all of the ones I ended up liking were often American and modern, which was I had no idea. Like I had a preference for that. I didn't know there was like a trend even. But yeah, this is Nathaniel Rowan from 2007. He was based in Brooklyn, but he is, I think, of German origin. If you've been listening closely, you've no doubt noticed a little bit of fumbling around noise here and there as Neufeld is talking. That's because she has her violin with her. And we couldn't very well pass up the opportunity to have her play something for us. I asked her to describe the composition process of the title track of her 2016 album, The Ridge. In particular, whether or not the frantic intro of that song is something that she came across by experimenting with different patterns, or if she was just chasing a feeling within. With a piece like The Ridge, I was chasing something that I felt in my mind, and I knew that the opening chord pattern was this. very minor and I didn't want to stay there I wanted a dramatic harmonic shift that felt like sun breaking through clouds but still like really tense and urgent and so that's how I landed it like going from that tonal world to that kind of a majorness. and if you were just jamming out on your fretboard on a violin you wouldn't necessarily arrive at that because it's like it's just awkward a lot of string players rely heavily on open open chord structures, right? Because why wouldn't you? But um, there's also the challenge of like one wanting to push past the comfort level of the instrument. But um, but yeah, I'm also really drawn to like all sharps or all flats, just in terms of like the feeling. You know, you get like different feelings with different keys, and so with that, I knew there had to be this like long sort of. Ex- harmonic exploration within that piece and I knew that it had to be you know all chords all the time to sort of satisfy that reach. Another satisfying reach in Neufeld's life when Arcade Fire fans come around to explore her solo music. I always think of it as just something that can open doors and it it 
you know, people will only come through the door if they're interested and, and want to and are ignited by what's in the door. But they might not see the door otherwise. So it's it's been a really great thing to, to you know, to to have as like a, an invitation to maybe more of a diverse audience than I would normally within the realm of experimental music. You know, having the access to a lot of kids or just a lot of rock music lovers will discover like Richie's music, my music, Beller Kest, Colin's music, like a lot of, a lot of us are into like m more experimental or new music. Um, and yeah, some people will walk through that door and they'll stay there and they'll really want to engage with it. So it's, I think it's a real blessing. The musical life of Sarah Neufeld, a real blessing. Be sure to check us out at online.berkeley.edu slash take note. Thank you for listening to Music Is My Life. <laughs>